In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the spanning set theorem and the basis for the column space. So first, uh, let's talk about the spanning set theorem. So let S denote the collection of vectors, okay, a finite collection of vectors in a set V, where V is the vector space, and let H be equal to the span of those vectors. Okay, the so the first thing is that if we take one of those vectors, okay, if one of the vectors, call it V sub K, if, v, if we can take V sub K and write it as a linear combination of the other vectors that belong to S, then the leftover set will still span H, okay? Secondly, if H is not equal to the zero vector, uh, then there exists a subset of S that is a basis for H, okay? So I'm gonna uh, demonstrate this theorem in the uh, following example, okay? Okay, so here in this example, we have three vectors, okay? And we're going to let h be equal to the span of those three vectors. So we want to show that the span of those three vectors is equal to the span of v1 and v2. And then eventually find a basis for that subspace h. Okay. So first off, let's, uh, if we notice, okay, uh, notice that v3, the third vector, okay, can be written as a linear combination of v1 and v2. Okay, so V3 is equal to 5 times V1 plus 3 times V2. Okay, and that can be um, realized. Yeah, that can be, I, that could be confirmed uh, very easily. Okay, so now we're going to use that to show that the, that the span of those three vectors is equal to the span of V1 and V2. Okay, because we have V3 is written as a linear combination of V1 and V2 now. So we're going to let X, okay, so we're going to let X belong to H, okay, some vector X, and that vector X is going to be, we can write this as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. Okay. So since, right? So since v, I'm sorry. Since v3 is equal to five times v1 plus three times v2, then we can take this. We we can replace v3 with with this linear combination. Okay. So we can go ahead and take this and substitute in for v3. Okay, and so that's going to give us the vector x. It's going to give us the linear co vector x in terms of a linear combination of v1 and v2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have v3. Oops. So x is going to be equal to c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c3 times 5 times v1 plus 3 times v2 okay so now everything here okay is in terms of either v1 or v2 so we can go ahead and rearrange this okay so this is c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus 5 times c3 v1 plus 3 times c3 v2 Okay, so then I'm going to put together the vec v1, put together v2. So for v1, we have c1 plus 5 times c3. And then for v2, we have c2 plus 3c2. Uh, 3 times c, I'm sorry, 3 times c3. Okay, so this shows that we have, we took a vector from H and rewrote it as a linear combination in terms of V1 and V2, okay, right, in terms of these two vectors. So therefore, okay, this vector X belongs to the span, 
right? This is a linear combination of v1 and v2. Therefore, x belongs to the span of v1, v2. Okay. So therefore, we showed we showed that the uh, by picking an arbitrary x from h, we showed that this and then rewriting that vector x in terms of the span of v1 and v2, we showed that the span of those three vectors is equal to the span of, of two vectors, particularly v1 and v2, okay? So that's the proof of the first part. The second part, we want to find a basis for the subspace of h, okay? All right, so that's pretty much what we have here. Since the span of v1 and v2 is equal to the span of v1, v2, and v3, and v1 and v2 turn out to be linearly independent. Therefore, right, from those two properties, we showed that the basis, we showed that we found a basis for the subspace of H. Okay, so let's write that out. Okay, so since Since the span of v1 and v2 is equal to the span of v1, v2, and v3, okay? And we know that, okay, again, we can verify v1 and v2, they're, they're, there's no uh, multiple. They're not multiples of each other. Therefore, they're linearly independent, okay? So we also know. v1 and v2 are linearly independent. Okay. Namely, they're not, there's no, right, v1 is not equal to a constant value of v2. So therefore, they're linearly independent. Okay. So they basically, we found that they span, right? V1 and V2 is in the, is, right, the span, and V1 and V2 are linearly independent. Therefore, from those two properties, okay? Okay, so because we know the spans, right? The span of V1 and V2, okay? We showed that's equal to the span of V1, V2, and V3. So it's spanning H. Okay, so, okay. so the span of V1 and V2, right, also belongs to H. And secondly, they're linearly independent of each other. So those are the two properties for bases, okay? So therefore, okay, v1 and v2 is a basis of h okay so we can use this idea uh, to talk about or to define the basis for a column space okay all right so let's take a look at this Okay, so basis for, for the column space. Okay, so let's say I have, uh, let's say we have a matrix B. Okay, so let B be equal to, let's say, 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 
and we have four zero 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 one zero zero and oops. let's see two negative one zero zero and the last column will be zero zero one zero okay so let this be our matrix b all right so note that okay and let's say we want to find okay we want to find the uh, basis for the column space of b Okay, so notice, okay, uh, notice that we have, okay, um, notice that B2, okay, so the second column, okay, B2, oops. B2 is equal to 4 times B1, right, okay, and B4 is equal to 2 times B1 minus B3, okay? So using the spanning set theorem that we just, uh, that we just talked about, uh, because we wrote B2, right, in terms of B1 and B4 in terms of B1 and B3, okay? So we can disregard, right, we can, we can throw out B2 and B4, just like we did up here. Okay, for V3 we wrote, right? For V3 we wrote, uh, we wrote it in terms of V1 and V2, so we discarded V3, and it, so the system, I mean the the sets collapsed from V1, V2, V3 to V V1 and V2. So we can do the same sort of thing here. Okay, so we can discard. Okay. Okay, so based on the spanning set theorem, okay, we can discard B2 and B4. Okay. All right. So these are right, these are the corresponding column vectors from B. Okay. Okay. So then, okay. So the basis. Okay. So the basis that we have for the column space. Okay. It's going to be equal to right. So the columns remember that the column space basically consists of the column vectors right of B. So we can disregard B two and B four. Okay, so so here's B two, here's B four. So we're gonna we're gonna have okay one zero 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 one zero zero and the last one will be zero one zero zero okay so one thing you should notice from this okay so there's a there's a easier way to get the basis of the column space of B if you notice okay. If you notice that the vectors here, the vectors in the basis, each one of these corresponds to the to the pivot in that in that same column. Okay, so for example, for this one, right, for the first one, that contains, right, that has pivot, right? There's a pivot there. For the second one, there's a pivot in this column. And for the third one, there's a pivot here. Okay. So the easiest way to find the basis for the column space 
is to do the is to put the matrix into reduced row echelon form, okay? Or you can put it in echelon form to identify, you know, the to identify where the pivots are. And then the columns that correspond to the pivots turn out to be the basis for the column space. And that's all because of the spanning set theorem. Okay, so that's a very nice way to find the basis of the column space. Okay.